You're watching Saturday Anime on the Sci-Fi Channel. Greetings, this is Reverend Paul, and this, of course, is Studio Chojin Raw. Now, originally, I was planning on following up my Kekko Common video with a review of Jushin Liger, but once again, life got in the way and I had to stop uploading for a little bit, and the Jushin Liger video is taking a little bit longer to complete than I thought it would, so I figured um, the best thing to do to get back into the groove of uploading again was to upload something quick and easy, and we can talk about Jushin Liger a little bit later. But there's no reason to be disappointed because the title we're going to be talking about today is kind of related to Jushin Liger. In fact, one could even say it is a distant cousin to Jushin Liger. And the title we're going to be talking about today is Guy, Awakening of the Devil. Now, Guy, Awakening of the Devil is a two-episode OVA series. The first episode was released in 1990, and the second episode was released in 1991. I feel like the best way to describe Guy, Awakening of the Devil is to say it's a pretty good example of an exploitation anime. It's kind of one part hentai, one part science fiction, one part devil man. It's kind of a cornucopia of all different kinds of anime genres put into a blender, and that's what I think makes this show pretty cool. So Guy Awakening of the Devil is about two space pirates. One of them is a guy, conveniently named Guy, and the other one is his sidekick, a chick named Reyna. And Guy and Reyna travel the galaxy searching for adventure and treasure, and they also happen to come upon lots of boobs and monsters along the way. So the first episode of Guy Awakening of the Devil begins with Guy and Reyna aboard an abandoned spaceship. And to their dismay, on this abandoned spaceship, Guy and Reyna do not find any treasure. Instead, they find this creepy, weird monster. And this monster is no ordinary monster, because you see, this monster is actually a scientist that has been mutated. And in his dying breath, he tells Guy and Reyna that they they need to go to Planet Geo and find Dr. Vale. And since Guy and Reyna don't have a lot of options because, you know, there's no fucking treasure on this goddamn abandoned spaceship, they feel like they have no choice but to go to Planet Geo and seek out Dr. Vale because who knows? Maybe Dr. Vale is some like rich fuck who's sitting on a mountain of gold or at the very least, maybe they could befriend Dr. Vale and when he dies, he will leave them tons of cash in his will. Who the fuck knows? I mean, one thing we're going to find with Guy Awakening of the Devil is that a lot of these details Details are not really explained. So for whatever reason, Guy and Reyna decide to go to Planet Geo to find Dr. Vale. And the thing we need to know about the Planet Geo is that Planet Geo is a prison planet and it is run by one of the most evil chicks in the galaxy. And this is a chick named Helga Hildius Heel. She has one of the coolest fucking names. And the thing too that's interesting is that not only is she a villain that has the last name Heel, but she's essentially Triple H before fucking Triple H even existed. What we find out about Warden Heel is that Warden Heel, along with her second in command, a dude named Xena, are basically using the prisoners of Planet Geo as their own personal sex slaves. They basically take the prisoners, they bring them up to their room, and they have their way with them. And we know the Xena dude is an evil dude because he's wearing lipstick, <laughs> which was a staple for old school anime. If you were a guy wearing lipstick in an old school anime, you were probably a bad dude, which is odd because around this time, like, Visual K was big, and there were a lot of cool male J-Rockers who wore a lot of makeup. I don't know why this didn't translate to a lot of 80s anime. I don't know why we couldn't have more lipstick-wearing heroes in the 80s, but once again, I'm going off on a tangent. Anyway, this Xena dude is evil, and him and Warden Heel are having their way with the prisoners, which is pretty fucked up, but it does lead to a lot of random hentai action, which of course is awesome in its own right. Now, Guy and Reyna manage to infiltrate the prison on planet. Planet Geo, and they do so by posing as prisoners. And when they are prisoners, they basically mingle with the other prisoners because they're doing their best to locate the missing scientist, Dr. Vale. And eventually, Guy is able to locate Dr. Vale. And to his dismay, Guy finds out that there is no treasure on Planet Geo. And this is like a recurring theme we're going to see in the two episodes of the series that Guy and Reyna are constantly going on these treasure hunts that yield no treasure. All of their treasure hunts are consistently waste of time. In 
fact, you could even argue that they would probably make more money if they did nothing at all. So Guy finds out that there is no treasure on planet Geo. And even though the treasure situation is a bust, Dr. Vale tells Guy that planet Geo is actually alive. In fact, it has its own cerebral cortex. The DNA of planet Geo has the capability of mutating people and turning people into these hideous monsters. Now, I realize that doesn't make any fucking sense at all and it's just batshit crazy, but I mean, we've gotten down to what the real reason of this show is. And the reason of this show is to just have like random monster fights, to have just random shots of boobs, random sex scenes, random shots of gore. This is why I think this show is the definition of an exploitation anime. The crazy plot of this show and the crazy explanations behind it are just these haphazard justifications to just shoehorn monsters into a fucking science fiction show. And it works. This show is fucking awesome. So anyway, all the prisoners end up turning into monsters and even Guy himself turns into a monster. And he turns into like a badass, like devil man-esque character. Like when Guy transforms into a monster, he's like a combination of like Bao and Tekaman. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's a pretty interesting design. I like the fact that like Guy isn't just purely a monster. He's kind of a monster with like mech parts to him. I mean, you're almost having the best of both worlds. You know, you have a cool monster design with a little bit of a mech design. I think the ending of the first episode of Guy is really strong too. Um, the ending ends with Warden Heel turning into a giant mutant monster and she becomes the embodiment of the boobs and monsters theme of the show by being a monster with a big pair of tits. And so Warden Heel's tit monster goes up against Guy's cool fucking mech monster and this is a really cool entertaining fight. What I find interesting about the second episode of the Guy series is that the second episode actually makes more sense. It has less of the boobs, it has less of the monster fighting, but it has a story that has more of a through line to it and there's a lot more logic behind it, but it kind of tones down a lot of the exploitation elements. In the second episode of Guy Awakening of the Devil, Guy and Reyna are on some like desert planet and they infiltrate this cult because they want to steal the giant golden idol that the cult worships. And we end up finding out that the cult was kind of like luring people into their temple because they want to sacrifice them to their god to get more power to take over the universe. I don't know. I mean, I don't mean to imply that the second episode of Guy Awakening of the Devil isn't as crazy as the first episode. It certainly is. It just has much more of a logic to it. And naturally, this episode ends with Guy turning into a monster and there's a fucking badass fucking monster fight scene at the end of this episode as well. I think another thing that's worth mentioning about the second episode of Guy is that they kind of um, refine the designs. Guy is wearing this kind of like black turtleneck thing. You know, he has much more of like a spy espionage kind of feel. He feels much more like a world-class thief. And the same thing with Reyna. They gave her this kind of like shoulderless cat suit. I think this looks really cool. I think it refines the designs a lot more. You know, I'm starting to kind of feel like I probably did a disservice of trying to explain the plot of these shows because plot is not what this show is about. This is a show about monsters, boobs, and just graphic anime violence. You know, this is a great example of just crazy shit that would happen in OVAs in the late 80s and early 90s. You'd always have monsters, you'd always have graphic violence, and you'd always have excessive nudity. And that's what Guy Awakening of the Devil is all about. And I mentioned that Guy Awakening of the Devil is kind of a cousin to Jushin Liger. Because you see, the director of Guy Awakening the Devil is a man by the name of Yorohisa Uchida. And Yorohisa Uchida was also the character designer for the Jushin Liger anime. And when you look at the designs in the Guy series, it seems pretty clear that there is a heavy Go Nagai influence. In fact, Madam Heel reminds me a lot of Dal Satan in uh, Jushin Liger. I mean, you could definitely see the influence of Gonagai in the designs. Even Guy's got the crazy fucking Gonagai sideburns going. I always felt like Guy was like an alternate design of Akira from Devilman. And when thinking about Uchida's connection to Jushin Liger, you can't help but think that maybe Guy could even be like a grown-up version of Ken Taiga from the Jushin Liger anime. Who knows? Maybe Guy is like in canon with Jushin Liger. I like the character design of Reina too. You know, she kind of feels like an 80s, 90s version of a Go Nagai's girl. She has that kind of Go Nagai vibe with her, especially with the short haircut. And you know, the more that I think of it, Guy Awakening of the Devil is basically kind of a super band of anime creators. Not only is Yorohisa Uchida directing the anime, but it also has some other big names that you might have heard of. Guy is played by Koichi Yamadera, which of course is probably best known for his role as Spike Spiegel. And Reina is played by Kazuo Ikura, 
who uh, of course played uh, Cowdery in City Hunter. Ikura and Yamadera are awesome voice actors and they bring a lot of personality to the characters of Guy and Reyna. In other hands, these characters could have been boring and unwatchable. And you know, even though these characters aren't given a lot to do or even given a lot of personality, these actors imbue personality into these characters with their performance. And the dynamic between them is awesome. The monster designs in this series was done by the one and only Masami Obari, who of course is famous as the character designer for the Fatal Fury films, and he also directed Fatal Fury the motion picture. He was also a mech designer for the Bubblegum Crisis. So I mean, Masami Obari lending his special flair into those creepy monster designs in the show. It's fucking awesome. You know, I've tried to put my finger on it time and time again, and it just kind of eludes me. I've tried to figure out why like 80s and 90s anime monster designs look so much better than modern day monster designs. I don't know what it is. I used to think it was the heavy use of black, but they use a lot of black in modern animes too. I think it could be the combination of the use of black, the hatching, the bright colors that contrast the dark areas. I don't know, but there's something about the monsters in 80s and 90s anime that just look so awesome. They have this great graphic feel and sort of retain this kind of textile creepiness and they add so much atmosphere to these OVAs. I love the monster designs in the show. One thing that's worth noting, which is, you know, somewhat unusual for an anime, is that Guy Awakening of the Devil is not based on any existing material. It's not based on a light novel or a manga. The story for Guy was an original story written by Uchida, and the scripts for the Guy episodes was actually written by Hiroyuki Kawasaki, who of course, you know, is famous for writing on such awesome series as Ranma One Half, Sakura Wars, Tekaman Blade. It is kind of weird to think that, like, the creative team behind Guy Awakening of the Devil, it's incredible to think that, like, these great creators came together to make this really fucking trashy show. I don't know, I'm glad that they did, but you wouldn't expect it from them, I guess. I really like Guy Awakening of the Devil, and I think it's also helped by the fact that it's only an hour long. It's got a good ratio of monsters, boobs, per the hour. It's certainly not the most graphic in terms of violence. It's not the most sexy anime. For the hour that it runs, it has a good combination of sex, violence, and monsters. I think another great way to describe Guy Awakening of the Devil is to imagine if there was an anime segment in heavy metal, like this story about Guy and Reyna, you know, going to another planet and then encountering monsters, then becoming a monster totally feels like it could have been ripped out of the pages of heavy metal magazine. I think it's a really enjoyable show. It's not going to be for everybody. Some people are going to think it's a waste of time. I think if you're looking for some fun, trashy anime and you're drunk or high on a Saturday night, this is a fun way to spend an hour. This week's question comes from Mr. Nameless, and Mr. Nameless asks, do you watch any other adult animated stuff that is not anime, such as anything on Adult Swim, old movies like Heavy Metal, or independent series like Hell of a Boss? Would you ever do a segment on these series? Thanks again. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nameless, for sending in a question. Yeah, I watch, um, other animated stuff that isn't anime. I mean, one of my first introductions to adult animation was 1981's Heavy Metal. That movie is awesome. <laughs> I love Heavy Metal. I love love the combination of animation and music. That film really captures like the spirit of the early 80s, especially I think like that early 80s comic book scene. When I was a kid, the uh, Tarna segment was always my favorite segment in uh, the heavy metal movie. It's definitely the story that got like the most attention. It feels like they spent most of their efforts like developing that story. And it's got that great rotoscoped animation. And I love that scene in the uh, Tarna segment where she strips off her clothes, she fucking 
swims in the pool, and then she gets her fucking Terrakian armor and just suits up. And that shit is so beautifully animated. I mean, it's all rotoscoped, but it's extremely well done. In recent years, I feel like the Den segment is starting to become my favorite segment in the 1981 heavy metal movie. That segment is great, and it has a lot of the same kind of fantasy elements of the Tarna segment, but what I love about that Den sequence is that there's so much comedy in it. John Candy is perfect as Den, and you would never expect him to be great in that role, but he is. I really wish they kind of made a Den fucking feature film. That would have been so great, but I love that Den story. It's just got random nudity, and it's hysterical. Yeah, I love heavy metal. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the Bakshi animated films, Fritz the Cat, Wizards, you know, Cool World and shit, Lord of the Rings, you know, like all that shit is pretty cool. I mean, this is all the stuff you would kind of consume pre-anime. And you know, I look, I really like the Harley Quinn animated show that's on. The dynamic between Poison Ivy and uh, Harley Quinn is really great. And I love the style of that show where it kind of feels like a little bit more of an edgy version of the Bruce Timm series. Probably my favorite like non-anime animation is the animated adaptation of Sam Keith's The Max. I think that's an amazing cartoon. It's probably the best thing MTV ever produced, you know? It's such a moody and atmospheric series. It's this great combination of comic book and cartoon. Like, even before, like, Rob Rodriguez did the living comic book with Sin City, the MTV Max animated series really feels like a comic book come to life. Mr. Gone is a very tragic, charismatic villain, you know? Maybe one of the best villains in comics. Yeah, Sam Keith's The Max. Awesome shit, man. And I've said this before, you know, as the channel grows, as I start to upload more, I want to diversify what I talk about. I want to talk about different things. I definitely want to talk about heavy metal at some point, because that's a movie that really... Heavy metal is almost like Uruske Doji for me. It was a movie that really kind of changed my life when I first saw it, and really made me rethink what you could do with animation and, like, comics and shit like that. In a lot of ways, like, I think heavy metal was, like, it prepared me for Uruske Doji. If I did not see heavy metal before I saw Uruske Doji, my head probably would have exploded and I would be dead and you would not be hearing this video. So the fact that I had a primer with heavy metal and that led me into Uruske Doji and it for better or for worse made me who I am today. I feel like one day, yes, I definitely have to talk about heavy metal. Thank you for sending in a question. Um, I'm sorry if that was rambly. You know, we're getting back into the groove of doing videos again. If you have a question that you'd like to ask me on Studio Chojin Raw, if you want to, you know, yell at me for taking breaks in video uploads, if you want to disagree with me and tell me my opinions are dumb, or if you just want to like say hi, Hi, you can always send me an email at studiochojin at gmail.com, make the subject raw, and I will be happy to read it on a future installment of this program. So that wraps up this week's edition of Studio Trojan Raw. It's a little bit of a kind of uh, scatterbrained video. It's my first video back after uh, the long break again. Let's try to get back into uploads again. I'm going to do regular uploads. We're going to make this happen. I'm going to try to do the Jushin Liger video next week. I was thinking about maybe pushing it back a little bit further, the Jushin Liger video, maybe by one more week. Maybe next week we can talk about Gunbuster. That was kind of something I felt like getting into. So I don't know. Next week, maybe we'll talk about Jushin Liger or Gunbuster. Who knows? But once again, thank you for listening to this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out the other Studio Chojin Raw videos. This is Reverend Paul saying until we meet again. <laughs>